My name is Ed Piskor. I'm Jim Rugg. I want to workshop an idea that, yes. that I had in mind uh, a while back, man. So in Image Plus Magazine, basically in a lot of ways, the, this channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe, is sort of birthed from these, these one-page strips I was doing in Image Plus Magazine. I did like three or four of them. And it was a strip called Image of Youth. And it was essentially like my kind of relationship with these comics growing up, how they inspired me, the effect they had on me, yada yada. Um, ultimately, I did not think that um, the comic strip format was for this kind of idea was really like the best use of my superpowers in, in, my, in my time. I was still making X-Men Grand Design while putting these together, and I just decided that I wanted to put like all of my creative capital, comic strong time, like towards the X-Men thing. So I quit doing these strips. And uh, Robert Kirkman hits me up on Twitter, DM, and is like, what the F, man? Why, why, you stop, why you stopping these strips? I like them, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, I got to, you know, I'm working on X-Men Grand Design. And he's like, I don't want to hear about that shit. I want to hear about Image Grand Design. <laughs> got the gears grinding. Yes. And uh, I couldn't stop thinking about the idea, man. The idea of, like, having my, like, you know, the, the cornerstones, if you will, of the Image Universe. Like, how would you put a story together to to get all this stuff to work out. Now this is just this is just an idea because like I sort of gave them like a light proposal and at the end they were like, "Oh, we were just playing." <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> yeah. I thought about it enough to have some some little ideas how that would shake out. I actually want to implore the kayfabers to participate. We'll we'll, we'll 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 crack this story. You and I are taking a screenwriting course, man, and it's about like breaking story and 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 figuring out where all the pieces go. We have a general idea of like who our players are. Now the grand design component is like how do we get all of these guys to kind of like interact and 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 be part of like one cohesive universe. Like one of the things that uh, that the image dude said was like, yeah, you know, well of course like. Wildcats can't be a part of it because Jim Lee, this is DC Comics now. We could choose to take it or leave it, but in my initial uh, proposal idea, I, I did cut that out uh, for obvious reasons, but I like this image of the six founding fathers right here, man, so I'm happy to keep it as well, man. Off the bat, my thoughts, and I think this might even be like a little clue into like how X-Men Grand Design worked in a way, man, because it's like you have all this raw material, now how do you get it to like become a fucking story? So, like, my uh, initial idea was the death of Al Simmons is important. You know what I'm saying? He was in the military with, where's our guy, Chapel? Right. Uh, so, and it's Chapel who blows his fucking head off. Now, in, in our comic, like, Chapel is going to have, like, a, a, a disease, like, a, a, a deadly virus, a deadly disease. It's not going to be HIV. But... In, the, in these comics, Shadowhawk and Chapel had the same sickness. Okay. So it's my idea that Al Simmons, Chapel, and whoever the guy is who is Shadowhawk, they're a part of like a, a trio, a part of a crew, doing some sort of spy craft, you know, back end work, something that requires guns, some Team Seven type shit, man. They're infiltrating some play. They got they got their marching orders. And they're they're conducting some kind of mission. Ultimately, Chapel is in business for himself, as they say in the wrestling biz. Obviously, he would be in league with. Uh, it would probably have to be Jason Wynn, but I like the idea of Tony Twist. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the hockey player, not the uh, right. not the not the ma <laughs> mafia boss. <laughs> so so Chapel's in business for himself, even though he's part of this trio, and upon discovery of whatever they were I would figure that out later whatever they they were working on Al Simmons learned too much during the operation he has to go uh my thought was because like if these guys are such elite soldiers say you shoot this bastard in the head and his body falls off of uh, falls into like an a place where you can't get it to disappear it so this body it's going to get discovered. It could be falling off of like a catwalk into some hard to reach something. But you have to come up with a reason for the police to have to start cracking a case. Because when you get the police to start cracking a case, that's when we could introduce Savage Dragon. Makes sense. Yeah, yes. yeah, and he, and he's on the like so he 
he knows something fishy's up, man. This is like he finds a credential, maybe a dog tag. Maybe maybe Al Simmons is such a hard to reach spot or Chapel had his cover blown, but he had to split and he could not make the body disappear. But the body has some things on it that really raises some red flags to the policeman, Dragon. Who gives a fuck about the town? We know that he's Chicago. We know that he's Harlem, but we're not going to worry about those details. This is the grand design universe. Some of my thoughts were that uh, because you have Youngblood, which is what? It's like the government force. That's right. But they're like the public government. They're, they're like the, the, the face of superhero dumb, like to the government. And, and one of the main reasons why this grand design thing would be impossible to do is because these are all fucking alpha males who make these comics <laughs> and somebody has to like there has to be there has to be some stakes and there has to be a guy who's not as strong as the other and i promise you zero of the founding fathers would want their guy to be the weakling but just as this is conversation man so this is like the government face this is <laughs> this is corporate i guess like there's right. some sort of like pr we'll call it private industry now what the heck is cyberforce jim they're like contractors. They're they're coming out of cyber data. So imagine like military contractors, like a Sikorsky or something that's building weapons, but also doing some civilian sales, but like a big defense contractor. Interesting. And so they're enhancing people, you know, like these are almost like cyborgs in that they're enhanced through this military contractor. So here's where my mind is going, man. These guys, through their enhancement projects, maybe beforehand they were working on enhancing these guys and that's how the two surviving members have a disease because it didn't quite work out maybe these guys are are uh mach one mach one sort of candidates test candidates like the actual cyber force they perfected it they figured it out and then you got rip claw and you got striker with a bunch of arms and that stuff but they were figuring out with with these guys and who ultimately uh become victims of the thing now maybe can we, I wonder if we could have a bad, like, can Wildcats be bad, man? Like, a lot of people don't trust corporations. What if that little uh, Jacob Marlowe dude is, uh, maybe Jacob Marlowe's in league with Jason Wynn. It's very easy to imagine Wildcats being at odds with Cyberforce. Because in a way, like, they're vying probably for government contracts, for business, you know, similar overlap in what they're producing. Could be government, uh, like, so we, it could be corporate espionage. That is the cause of all this stuff that makes Shadowhawk Chapel and ultimately Al Simmons discovers that they're all being worked. They're just puppets in a thing on the lowest totem pole, the lowest part of the totem pole. And uh, they thought that they were, were much more necessary. Maybe the job that they were doing was so tough that they thought they were going to be really rewarded. I remember you said something about you did you did some illustration work for these contractors that like overturned capsized boats in the ocean and and they get a piece of the bounty right maybe that's this kind of thing man that makes a lot of sense yeah yeah like like depending on where this stuff happens it would be whoever gets there gets it right and and they get to claim it and everything so so like the private business or we'll say both of these are if these are contractors the entire schmas like all of the all of the conflict can be because of these two like warring groups that are trying to get some fountain of youth, deus ex machina, something or other that ends up leaving one guy dead with some investigation being done. And that's how we get this guy in it. And maybe, maybe he discovers the bigger picture. And that's where the Savage Dragon's villains come in because they're all weird cats, man. Crab claw hands, dudes that breathe fire. Yeah, it would not be hard for to confuse Cyberforce with his uh, cadre of villains. Sure, yeah, yeah. So, so like, maybe the diseases that these guys have, like, if it's not checked, if they don't get some kind of antidote, they're going to turn into, like, some Savage Dragon villains, man, that could breathe fire or, or, like, do the things that they do that are crazy. But ultimately, with ever, whatever evolution takes place from the Deus Ex Machina serum fountain of youth thing that these guys are going after or maybe it's the thing that makes cyberforce cyberforce maybe like an anti-rejection drug or something so when i like implant you with fucking titanium metal shit it'll stick 100 percent <laughs> of the time man these guys got sick from the drug and then ultimately they died 
and then they got buried, man. So then the whole the way the whole story would end would basically be like, you know, first pages of this with Rick Grimes waking up and you know he would have to fucking put a cap in the head of like a zombie shaft. That would be a, an amazing opening. Real real early end. Yeah. Oh, opening. I mean opening for Walking Dead. You yeah, know, yeah. Like like the bridge between the image I guess generation one versus Walking Dead, like that'd be a really cool. That was my exact thought too, where it's like Kirkman is entrenched. He is, for all intents and purposes, he is Image Comics. Now he is right there in league with McFarlane and Larson and Valentino and Silvestri and Eric Stevenson. So that was like my thing. It's like you have to end it with the introduction of the Rick Grimes character and like the first fucking zombie he blasts in the head has to be some of these guys. That infection concept is a really good one to get to that point. In this world, it's not a zombie world. So like in Walking Dead, you never have to explain how zombies got to be that way. It's just a fact of the matter. And it's, it's, a, it's a curveball that life threw at these characters. I don't know if he gave an origin. I'm not sure. But in our comic, it's not a Walking Dead comic. You could give that. And that could, be, that could be the MacGuffin to carry all these characters through, man. So that was sort of like my earliest, you know, paragraph idea of, like, what I would do if I could get everybody involved. The other thing I wanted to do, if possible, was try to get some of the more ancillary guys involved. How would you get Pitt in here? It could be, a, like, an evolution. He could have been one of the one of the crew of CIA dudes that was infected, and, and maybe it was like they were infected with, like, a Captain America super serum or something that, like, like anabolic steroids, gives you very great short-term results, but over time, you might let la- Lyle Lozato that shit. Here's one way you could get a pit involved, and it would tie into things like Supreme, and that would be bringing in aliens, which would can be part of both Dragon and Wildcats, so it could be an alien technology that, that people are vying for and that's being uncovered, and that kind of draws in all of those alien characters because there are several several branches of aliens that all these... Even the early image books, you know, combat is is alien. So even these early image books have several alien factions. Smart. And if you pulled out some kind of alien thing, you could bring a disease out of that as well. You know, that could be the disease that that is infected. And obviously, like, alien conspiracy cover-up type things are a big part of things like black ops and sort of the dark side of of military uh, contracting, especially, you know, in U.S. conspiracy theory. So it wouldn't be too hard to link, like, a special ops you know, like very elite team to some kind of alien artifact or specimen that they are uh, vying for. And certainly you'd have corporate interest. You know, anybody that's developing high tech would have an interest in it. So you would have cyber data interested. Wildcats would be interested and presumably, you know, Spawn and Chapel and the, uh, the their government. employers would be interested. Yeah, so yeah, just the government it would get general. everybody kind of going after it. That would be your MacGuffin that would un- unleash this disease and then it would be like trying to get the genie back in the bottle while everybody's kind of fighting over control of it. Yeah, yeah, that's super smart. And some of the, I think some of the reference material that I would use like when constructing the story with that in mind would be to like the, some of the conspiracy theory out there about uh, about computer technology. Uh, there's like a big part of like the Area 51 stuff is um, trying to reverse engineer how we got to where we did with microprocessors because in the history of computers, you have vacuum tubes, these big giant light bulb type things, and then there's a big missing middle piece as per the conspiracy theories. I'm not educated enough in computer sciences to know what those middle pieces are or like what what the... with the vast change, like the, the, the watershed moment that turned these big light bulb like vacuum tubes into silicon. Uh, the conspiracy theorists like to say that it was technology that was on, that was discovered on a crashed uh, right. s- spaceship or something. And, th- and that is actually, that is, uh, that is the back end story for uh, Miracle Man. Alan Moore's at Miracle Man. He, he uses that, you know, crash aliens and they figure out that, you know, these aliens have like a second a second body elsewhere and then they reverse engineer it for, for those characters. So like, I think that's the first place I would go because this is all just fun. Like if you were right. to, if you were to make this, it's all just fun. It's all just whimsy. But if you can root and you, you could get some, some organic material, something like 
more tangible to like bring into the story. It just makes it more rich. And that's like one of the things that I try to do whenever I'm writing something is like, what kind of like real world analogs can you bring into like such a fantastical, silly, fun, nonsense story? And and, and that's what Alan Moore would often do. All, all the best comic writers can find like some weird thing that happened in real life. Putting this in the context of the class that we've taken and what I've read about Alan Moore's process where he's kind of brainstorming out mm -hmm. just you know, a very aerial perspective of a topic or subject or characters. Um, you know, cyber data from cyber force is one of those high tech connections that would make sense, but it'd be very fun to actually break this down and kind of like map out all of these ideas in that brainstorm process of like, we know certain pieces that we need. And then how do you get there? Uh, you know, for, from how do you fill in those blanks? You know, having an alien thing be something that triggers kind of a hunt or makes everything go it's a reason for Supreme to come back to Earth. You know, he could find out about this stuff from whatever he's doing in, in deep space and realize, like, there's a problem. You know, Earth is in peril. I've got to get back there. I even thought um, Blood Wolf. <laughs> you could bring Blood Wolf in once you start sending your uh, tentacles out into space. Yeah, that's amazing. So uh, it, it would be fun to pull in as much of that stuff. And, and from that point of view, like, Death Blow would fit right in there, too, with this whatever elite team this is. Uh, that's maybe the, the very first human responders. That is pretty much what I have uh, because it was such like I was testing the waters, seeing if they were serious. They ultimately were very much not. But it is such a fun idea to play with. And I wanted to like at least get some of that out into the universe. But we have a lot of holes in our story. And what I uh, implore the kayfabers to do after listening to this thing Comments are there. The comments are open. Like, how would you add to this narrative? And yeah. how would you make it even more rich? Because ultimately, if this thing is sexy enough and stays in my head, I write, I draw, I pencil, I letter, and I don't need permission to make fan fiction. And, and neither does any of the kayfabers out there, man. So, like, this could be the greatest fucking bootleg comic in the history of American comics. Yeah, and what we're looking for, I think is probably the wall with all the image comics tacked up and, and threads going between them. So we're going to need some photographic proof of how this is all breaking down uh, in, in the uh, kayfabers world. Eddie P's vision is, uh, is, is lacking. Uh, so I implore you to also use red yarn uh, in the <laughs> photographs just because it shows up better on screen, man. Don't, don't, go, don't go for the black because it will blend in with those black ink lines. I'm going to go one step further, and I don't think one color yarn is going to cut it. I, I You're going to need multiple colors to kind of like code each of your threads. Yeah. One of the challenges is going to be to give, uh, give good shine to, to each of the Founding Fathers properties, man. Um, I don't have much specifically, specifically for like a Shadowhawk other than, you know, he and, he and Chapel share that same same sickness we need to get him a little bit more shine and uh what do you do with vogue <laughs> from uh, young blood is she russian <laughs> she's a model i do know that <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't even get to these characters then the away team yeah the road team more aliens photon <laughs> Yeah, so that's pretty much what I have. Kayfabers, put your ideas. Expand upon what we have in the comments. I'm thrilled to see it. I'm stoked to put this video out there, like, right this minute, to be honest with you, man. <laughs> uh, just to see, like, what the heck people are thinking, how they would expand upon this thing. And by the way, if you want to start churning out pages with some of the stuff we laid out, by all means, do so. <laughs> and I'll spread those things online. It'll be, it's, this is cooler than Bart Kira. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll leave it at that right now, though, Jim. We should get back to making our own comics so that we can keep the roof over our heads. Okay, Fabers, like, subscribe, and follow the YouTube channel. All the while you uh, brainstorm your Image Comics ideas, hit the bell icon, and we'll notify you whenever we have new and fresh videos available. You can find Cartoonist Kayfabe merchandise at our spread shop. There's a link below the video to that. I think I just figured out what to do with Trencher in the story, man. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, give these guys their marching orders. Read more comics. <laughs>